Philadelphia Eagles. Are they really overrated in the NFL? It is the number one seed in the NFC right there in their grasp. What do we think about that Philly defense? They're the number one defense in the league. And one more thing. We're going to look at the playoff outlook through week 12. And we're going to talk to the coldest panel in the game and a lot more. With that being said, you already know what to do. Do music. Good to see you. Good to see you, my guy. Good to see you, my guy. Next. Next. Uh, he's one of the realest Dallas Cowboys fans I know. Right now, looks like he's probably sitting back saying, I'm about to pack it in, and now it's NBA basketball season. But either way, he's still riding with the Dallas Cowboys regardless. He's my guy. He's my guy. Goes through my veins, y'all. Gerald. Chief, what's good? What you got? What's good? What's good? You know what I mean, just chilling, you know, same old, same old. You already see, guys, they don't have that energy like they did because Dallas Cowboys ain't bring you the energy like they did. But they know what they're doing. They still are the coldest can on the game. You know what you need to do. Hit that like and subscribe button. It's only $3.99. Ah, uh, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Uh, are the Philadelphia Eagles overrated in the NFL? Well, let's look at the NFC standings as of right now. Eagles are at eight and two at the top of the division. Commanders at seven and four. Cowboys at <laughs> three and seven. The Giants at the bottom of the barrel. At two and eight. As we already know, the Eagles have won six straight games. They are the second hottest team in the NFL. Eight and two or better in three years for the first time. The keys in this winning streak, very easy. The defense has been dominating. Dominating. As I've already stated, the number one defense in the league coming up to week 12. Saquon Barkley has, without a shadow of a doubt, has shown he's been an MVP candidate. There's no doubt. Second in run and running back in the league right now. Arguably, in my eyes, he's the best running back in the league. But as rushing, as the numbers say, he's number two right now. And something that we did get away from last year and we picked up this year, Complimentary football. We're playing bully ball, man. We're figuring this thing out. I want to ask you, Daryl, if the NFC Championship was today, Lions, Eagles, who you got and by what? Uh, Lions by probably uh, 10, to 10 points to two touchdowns. You know what I mean? I think the, e the Eagles are... The, I think the Eagles and the uh, Lions are, are kind of equal on paper, 
but there's one thing that separates both teams and that's one team embodies their head coach and the other team wins despite of their head coach and all of those deficiencies that are in the regular season that things look really really good in week 12 it's like you see them more in the playoffs like last year when Dan Campbell always used to go for two on on times where he could have kicked the extra point it looked really cute during the regular season then he went to the playoffs and it just effed him over like you can't see the head coaching deficiency now because your talent overshadows it but it's something that will come up if it comes up next week, if it comes up in two, three weeks, you won't be able to hide it all season. Interesting. Interesting. Same question to you, Coach. Lions, Eagles today, and it was the NFC Championship. Who you got today, and by what? Lions fifty-four, Eagles twenty-one. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's what Dan Campbell's thinking from last year. Now, with all that being said, if the, if the Lions are embodying, mind, body, and tackling the way Dan Campbell is teaching, Eagles have no chance. Not one. It's almost like they went to Oz. They'd be like Lions and Tigers and Lions. Oh, my. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So you're saying this team is getting blown out, but they have the number one defense in the league. I want y'all to check this out. Points per game. They average just bad, a little under 18, number six. Yards per game, two, 273. That's number one in the league. Yards per play. They're only getting 4.7, under five yards a game. Number two, third down converted. Dang, Rick, Rick, 34.7. That's number eight. Getting the red zone, that's not really happening. Correct, 46.4. That's number five in the league. So you're telling me the way this defense and Dick Fangio is playing out their mind, you honestly think they're going to put 54 points up on them? You honestly think you're going to be able to have Jared Goff just sitting in that pocket, just carving up the best secondary in the league? Let's pump our brakes for a second here on this. On this. Blowout. Let's pump, <laughs> the down the, the, let's pump our brakes for a second because we're only halfway through the season. Anything can happen in any way, any shape, any form. At the end of the day, I, I'm going to give it to the Detroit Lions. They are a heck of a football team. And to be honest with you, they're the best football team on paper. But to say you're going to blow out, the Eagles 54 to 27, that is not going to happen. Yes, it is. That will not happen. That will happen. That will not happen. That will happen. I'm telling the you. The Eagles are who we are, know they are. I'm sorry to interrupt that, but the Eagles, at best, are fighting to show their coach that they're better than what he coached. Now, when you're fighting against an uphill battle, it's called dissension. And when you have dissension on a team, you're not focused on what the real prize is, which is the Super Bowl. You're trying to focus on what is right for you and getting a new head coach where the Lions have a vision. They have a path. And Dan Campbell is driving that big body Mercedes all the way to the Super Bowl. And when the Eagles get in the way, He's going to change it to a four by four and run them over, blah, 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 and keep it moving. Because the and, Eagles are not focused on what it matters the most. And, and, and that's also saying y'all going to, y'all go beat the Rams. Y'all are going to beat the Niners that haven't been full strength, that y'all are going to beat the, the hot Cardinals that are on a four game streak. Y'all already lost to the Falcons. The Eagles aren't really like a, plug and put into the NFC championship. I mean, they're the hottest team right now, but they were the hottest team 11 weeks in last year. I'm not saying that they're not plugging plug in that they're going to the NFC championship. Not, not saying that right now, but last week we were all saying that we weren't sure what they were going to do. If they had to show us if they beat the commanders, they no. beat the commanders. 
They beat Mom the Breaks off them to yeah. beat the Commanders. So now, now we're trying to put our brakes again on the Eagles. Nah, well, it's not well, that. The only reason there why has to be guys are going to just a little bit more octane is yeah, they put fifty, they put fifty-two up on the Jaguars. That was cute. That was cute. We didn't do what we were supposed to do. We could have put up a little more, not fifty-two. Not gonna lie on that. But at the end of the day, come on now, let's be honest with ourselves. Fifty-four on the to go back to what he said. Fifty-four on. Oh, the I don't. I don't think that. I don't think fifty-four. Stop. Stop. So you got. You got to. You got to put in context. Jaden Daniels only got twenty-two rushing yards in the last two weeks combined. Not just against y'all, but in the last two weeks combined. That means the ribs are still kind of hurting him. I don't think he played to his full strength and not playing to his full tender, strength. You would want to say, them ribs are tender. You know how you put them on the smoker yeah. and they get real tender. Yeah, I mean, you know what to talk about y'all. Y'all don't know how to bar the high, What? What's the high-powered Eagles offense that their defense looked so good against this year? What, what, like, what was the most high-powered offense? Well, right now, they're just getting in the play. I really, that, the offense is just getting in the play. Like, oh, no, I'm saying they're getting there. They're getting to the, right now, when it comes down to which side of the ball is more impressive, it's definitely the defense. But where, let's not look at, it, like, the offense is shabby. Like, they don't, like, they don't have one of the top offenses in the league. No. no. I was I was saying, what offense has your defense played that I could look at and be like, oh, that's why I, oh, I don't oh. think your defense has played easy, an offense. Easy, yet. simple. Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Just okay. Joe Burrow, yep. Joe Burrow yep. has been that, that was, that over, was 17 over points. 350 yards. He did, did T. Higgins play that game? And, they, and we're still we still went out there and ball. We, we did. Did T. Them. Higgins play? Didn't T. Higgins? Wasn't T. Higgins did you that game? It wasn't, that's not our that's a totally that's different problem. offense with without T Higgins. That's not our problem. Yeah, but but it's like it's like against the when y'all played the Bucks, like of course, like oh the buck the Bucks beat you, but y'all didn't have Devontae Smith and AJ, and that worked that ex, that worked for y'all. But if they don't have T Higgins, that's the same thing. So what was the excuse when when we played the Saints and the Saints was the hottest offense in the league and we held them under? No, nah, bro, I I I think y'all have a great defense and y'all y'all I think I think. I just want to see your defense against like a really a really good team that's like I think I think that Bull Mitchell is the truth, is the truth. I think Jalen Carter is the truth. I think Vic Fangio turned that defense around a hundred percent. I just think I'd have a better scale on where that defense is than playing a good offense, like a really good offense. We did, but we I did. think that I think they're the truth. Though. I think they're the a playoff defense. We hundred percent. We did play good. We played at least three good offenses. I just named Packers. We played them week one, and but still, they are good offenses, right? And that that was in that was in Brazil, on a on a field matter, that wasn't football. Matter. You're saying good offenses. That's a good offense, right? Yes or no? I mean, Jordan Love has an interception in yes every no. single. I mean, it's a, it's a good yes offense. No. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, it definitely it's, is. Yeah. All right, that Bengals. Good offense. Yes or no? Not they're 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 mid tier, I think, without T. Higgins. They're they're a one trick pony without T. Higgins. Thank you. Throw to throw to Jamar Chase. Who who else is on their All team? Right, so now so then so then you go out there now as hyped as everybody was with the with the commanders, commanders were a good offense. Now the commanders are we're good going offense. Off, they were now just we're gonna go off with what? What's their next excuse? But, it's but, not an excuse, right, put, it's just right, y'all have a good right, defense, hands down. But you have yet to be challenged as a defense where you are being coached by coach. Okay. Yes, this is the NFL. There's going to be injuries. Okay. So and you take we, advantage no. of when you have that opportunity when that other team has been injured. So when we beat, so when we beat the Rams, what's going, to be, what's going to be the excuse now? But what if you don't? Yes. Oh, we're still, we're still, it's not, it's not going to be as easy as. still top of the NFC East. I'm all right with that. I could care less if they're doing it any given Sunday. Bro, the Eagles' goal has nothing to do with, like, week 13 wins. It's way bigger. So what do you think about what – so, like, looking at this whole defense, what's your take on our D-line then? Oh, bro, when, when Jalen Carter jumps, off the, jumps out the screen, that D-line is a top five D-line in the league, bro. That that I think that D line was like designed to be though. Y'all y'all always have been that team that like 
y'all move like six, seven, like D linemen to the point where it's not like this one star D lineman that does all the work. It's like, y'all keep fresh dudes in there. So it's like, I've always, I've always liked that about the Eagles. And mm-hmm. I don't know if Nick Fangio does that in his scheme, but I know the Eagles have done that in recent years. So you won't see dudes jump off their D line because they, they, they always have, they got, they got like five, six, seven good DNs like every year is crazy. And then, let me ask you this coach. How is our rookie Cooper DeGene and Quinn Yard Mitchell looked in the eyes of you? They looked above par. They did what they were supposed to do. I mean, let's keep it real. They passed the eye test. But I'm just saying, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse. It's almost like talking about that. Until you play that top tier offense and that top tier coaching, Y'all defense is good. It's nothing spectacular. It's good. And this won its game. Okay. Well, let me read you these. Let me read you these numbers. And I'm gonna show I'm gonna tell you something that's good. All right. Drake London, one catch for five yards. Green Bay Packers receivers, one catch for six yards. Chris Olave, two catches for 23 yards. Mike Evans, two catches for 19 yards. Uh, let's see. Cooper had one catch for 10 yards. Neighbors, one catch for nine yards. Mark Chase, two catches for 19 yards. Jag receivers, one catch for 11 yards. CD Lamb, two catches for 14 yards. Terry McLaurin, no catches, no yards. How do those numbers sound? when it comes to someone being good, when it comes down to putting on Mitchell, that uh, lockdown corner. I've just named well, nothing but. It, it, I've it named nothing like good. but all pro can receivers. Have, can I have He's yeah. done nothing but lock down every last one. Hey, hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Darryl, hold your hand up. Pat. All right, tag in. Um, <laughs> What's going on here? Y'all played subpar teams with subpar quarterback. Uh, Not to say uh, Green Bay's uh, quarterback is uh, subpar, but. Uh, Let's wow. be real. Hold on, hold on. This is my scope. I give y'all defense where it's at. Corners are looking good. Now, with C.D. Lamb, where he's supposed to be at with that, and that overthrows everybody at least six times a game. If you haven't realized that by now, you've been under a rock, and you still ain't still claiming Dak is one of the top-tier quarterbacks. He's not. Jalen Daniels, Never ribs were hurting, so he wasn't slinging it like he was supposed to. So y'all got away with a few. Again, I'm going to speak football. You're going to get away with a few. And, yes, y'all are ranked number one. Great. But until you get a team that's going to punch you back in the mouth, that's when you're going to be battle tested. And y'all haven't been battle, battle tested, where a team punches you back in the mouth and, and see what you do after that. And and these these numbers they 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 sound real good. You know what you know what also sounds good? Uh, three 12 win seasons in a row. No one cares about right. Yo, know, if this dude shuts a, if this dude gets blown out in a playoff game, all those stats that you said before won't even matter because people will just people will just remember him for that last moment. Quentin Mitchell is he he came out the draft as the number one corner, so I almost expected this. Like, this is how a number one corner got to show up. But to be a number one corner in the league, I got I got to see that in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's where everything matters. No, Green Bay was the first team to win a Super Bowl. No one remembers their regular season. No one. No one. Man. They remember they won the first Super Bowl. They don't remember the regular season. Swing on Mitchell right now is on pace to be in the it's best nice. rookie corner in the game. Yeah. He, he might be the best corner right now based up to week – 11. But that won't mean nothing in the big picture. Okay. All right. When that team punches you in the mouth. Let's look on the other side. Playing Let's nice look on the side of the ball now. We know that we know that uh Saquon Barkley is having an MVP season. And there will be a team that is going to say, you know what? We're not going to let Saquon beat us. We are going to stack the box. And we're going to put this game in the arm of QB1. That would be stupid. Say that again? That would be stupid. I was like, I'd let Saquon beat me. 
You would let Saquon beat you over Jalen Hurts. He's about to pull a hamstring. Yeah, definitely. I don't think, like, I mean, even if my man gets, like, 152 touchdowns, it's only 14 points. Hmm. Sure. Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts got, got a Heisman Trophy winning receiver. And his arm than Saquon is with just his running man. And, and Jalen Hurts is an injury prone. Saquon is. So on one of those nice, good, long runs, whoop, they go, they go, they go, they go to trigger that hammy. And then he's out the rest of the season. Wow. Whoop. Say, that yo, J- Jalen Hurts been to the Super Bowl without Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley ain't done nothing without Jalen. Now, Jalen, Jalen don't need Saquon. He already proved what he was way before Saquon. He was already the leader of that locker room way before Saquon. Saquon needs the Eagles. The Eagles didn't need Saquon. Saquon improves them, but they were in Super Bowls before Saquon. I agree. Daryl and I don't agree on a lot. I, I agree with Daryl. I agree. I agree with Daryl. I'm going to ask you guys both this question. What must the Eagles do to maintain the momentum through the second half of the season? Daryl. Embody Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, when he's up 35 to 0, or if he's down 35 to 0, he's always he always looks determined. He always knows what his job is. Know your role. Do not try to be Superman. Everybody just claim your own responsibilities as an individual. Be accountable, not only to yourselves, but to the team like nobody's the one thing about the Eagles that I'll give salute to right now you can look at the Eagles and you know like nobody's bigger than that team right now everybody play their roles Dalen ain't trying to be Superman no more Saquon here you could be Superman this game AJ you want to be Superman it's the Avengers you know what I'm saying but bro like we've we seen it last year that could one argument in the locker room could topple that up and and not vibing with your head coach and him making stupid decisions which he will at one point, which he will, could could mess up the whole season. Same question to you, Coach. What must the Eagles do to maintain the momentum through the second half of the season? Stop relying on one one object. Everybody's speaking on how great Saquon is. And I, I think he's been a phenomenal running back up to this point. But you're going to have to put the ball in Jalen's hands at some point. And I know it gets cold. It's cold. This is why they went and got Saquon. But what they did wrong was use Saquon second half of the season like it was the first half of the season. <laughs> because second half of the season, Saquon is not as effective as they people think. If you look at his stats from mm. the Giants, mm. as it got colder, mm. he got worse. Mm. Well, because he was used so much. All right. Well, this is what I'll say. Did he have an off? Did he have an offensive line like the Eagles? Did he have offensive nope. line in, in New York? Let me ask you this again. Uh, did he have an offensive line like the Eagles? He led the league, so at one point he must never have had. had never had a top one receiver like AJ Brown. Oh, or another top. Two. No, he a he had old good old Dan, like Daniel Jonathan Jones. Smith. He never yeah. had weapons like this, so. I think Kalen Moore could know when to pump the brakes on ah, a little bit. There's the tricky question that you didn't ask. Kalen Moore. That is the X factor. Is he going to be Kalen Moore, the OC from Dallas, or is he going to be the case the Kalen Moore that has evolved and knows what to do in certain situations? He will. That is the X factor for the Eagles. He will. Oh, he got the formula. He got the Saquon 25 times a game. He got the formula, bro. That's the formula. Agree. Looking at the playoff outlook, if the playoffs were today, they would play the Washington Commanders. Mm. It would be at, it would be in Philly. What's the score and what's the prediction? Talk to me. Bro. Is everybody healthy? Everyone's healthy. Mm. <laughs> That's not fair. Oh, coach, you take this. You take this. You take this. 28 24. Oh, Daryl, your prediction. Boy, uh, I second that. I can see that. 28 24. Eagles. <laughs> I, say 20, 
I'd say 35 24 Eagles. Ah, uh, this was a good one. This was a good one. I had the coldest panel in the game. Ah, uh, there was a lot to be said, wasn't there? Ah, uh, but with that being said, if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, email us at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. It's me, Michael C., the source of life over the mic. I got the coldest panel in the game. I got Daryl T. I got Coach Twilight. Mama will be back later. And with that being said, I'm going to leave you with these four words. Now let's make it epic. Go, birds. Let's make this epic. You like this episode? Just think, are the Eagles really contenders or pretenders?